Rakam. No state in the country has perhaps experienced the kind of drama and high political turbulence that Tamil Nadu has over the last 12 months. Which is why we on India Today have commissioned possibly the first of its kind poll. A poll that has symbolized much of what has gone right and wrong with Tamil Nadu in the last 12 months. A poll that could offer a pointer to what lies ahead, not just in Tamil Nadu, but in a state that will have a critical impact on the general elections of 2019. This is the India Today Karvi Research. Big Tamil Nadu poll, the first poll since the superstar of cinema. Rajni Khan decided to plunge into electoral politics. The Rajni effect and much more lie ahead of the big Tamil Nadu poll this evening on India Today. The headlines. The DMK-led front will sweep Tamil Nadu with 130 seats if elections are held today. MK Stalin emerges as the overwhelming favourite to the, be the next chief minister. That's the first big finding of the India Today Karvi opinion poll. Rajni Khan will make a strong debut if polls are held today in Tamil Nadu. His party could win as many as 33 seats and importantly 16% votes. And his popularity is rising all the time. Tamil Nadu says Rajni Khan will have a long and successful political career. It's the AIDMK that's taking the biggest hit. The ruling party's tally could drop to just 68 Jailalitas. Legacy seems to be badly splintered. That's right, the Rajni effect and plenty more coming up on this unique India Today poll on Tamil Nadu, which we believe will be one of the critical battleground states in the next 12 months. Our methodology, Karvi Research has done 4,758 interviews conducted for this survey over 77 assembly constituencies. That's 33% of the 234 assembly constituencies of Tamil Nadu. Rural urban divide represented in this poll. January 7 to 12, 2018 were the dates when the survey was conducted. And as I said, this is a survey that will give you a sense as to what is happening in the state with the maximum political churning at the moment. 4,758 people polled and the survey clearly is coming up with very interesting findings. I want to go to my colleague Rahul Kaval who will tell you what exactly is happening as per the poll if elections are held today in Tamil Nadu. Over to you Rahul. Thanks Rajdeep. Given the huge churn in Tamil Nadu politics, and the disillusionment that's creeping in with the functioning of the current AIA DMK government. The big question is, if elections are held today, what would happen? Remember, the India Today Karvi Insights opinion poll is the first poll that scientifically maps the impact that Rajni Khan's entry would have in Tamil Nadu politics. But this poll was done at a time when Rajni Khan had been a neta only for two weeks. So bear that in mind as you see these numbers. This is what the new assembly of Tamil Nadu could look like. Uh, we'll deal first with vote share percentages. Karvi projects for India today that the DMK alliance would bag 34% vote share. The AIA DMK alliance likely to bag 26% vote share. This is 15% less than the last election, which means that the AIA DMK votes would half in comparison with the last polls. Rajni Khan's new party comes in with 16%. Now, this is not what Rajni Khan usually delivers at the box office, but remember, his film hasn't been released in its entirety. He's just announced he's making a political film and he's already got 16% saying he's their favorite. What would the new assembly look like? How do these votes translate into seats? Let's take a quick look at that. India Today and Karvi went out and asked people. Who would they vote for? And when we translated the vote share percentages we picked up into seats, we found that just at this time, the DMK is in pole position to form the next government in Tamil Nadu. The Stalin-led DMK expected to bag 130 seats. That's 32 seats more than the last elections. AIA DMK crashing to 68, which is half the number of seats the party won in the previous assembly elections. Rajnikanth's new party 
picking up 33 seats. Now, that's a fair number given that the poll started when Rajni Kant had been in politics for one week and was completed when he'd been in politics for two weeks. So, given that people hardly had their time to see Rajni Kant's policies, what he stood for, 33 seats is not a bad beginning. Others expected to pick up three. Let's now come to the question of who is the favourite candidate to be Chief Minister? Now on this question, and it's interesting to map how Rajnikanth does vis-a-vis -vis O Panir Salvam, E Palani Sami and Stalin. So we'll take it up here. The favourite candidate to be Tamil Nadu's Chief Minister by a long margin is Karuna Nadi's heir apparent MK Stalin. 50% of the respondents in the India Today Karvi poll said they wanted Stalin to be the next Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu. Rajini Kant, interestingly, within a week of his political debut, comes in at number two. 17% want Rajini Kant to be the state's next Chief Minister. There's trouble after that because Opanir Salvam, despite the fact that he's not Chief Minister, actually has more than double the popularity of E. Palani Sami. 11% want Panir Salvam as Chief Minister, only 5% want Palani Sami as Chief Minister and that really is a problem. Then there is Kamal Hassan. Kamal Hassan coming in at 4% but remember this is a time when Kamal Hassan hasn't fully explained what kind of politics he intends to do and when he intends to join politics. TTV Dinakran coming in at 3%. So Rajdeep, it's very interesting that 50% of the respondents want Stalin. Would you consider this a bumper opening, like a box office hit? Or do you think that given this is Rajni Kant we're talking about, 33 seats and 16% vote share is not good enough? Well, that's the question that we're going to answer. Has Rajni Kant scored a big political hit or not in his first day, first show? The first poll that has truly assessed Rajni Kant's popularity in Tamil Nadu politics. Raj Chengappa, editorial director of India today with me. Also with me, Dikshit Channa, the vice president of Karvi, which has done the poll. Shekhar Ayer, senior journalist, knows Tamil Nadu inside out. Also joining me at the moment from Chennai, TKS Ilan Govan, MP DMK, VA Pudugendi, MLA AI DMK, Narayan Tirupati, spokesperson of the BJP, TS Sudhir is joining me from Hyderabad. R.K. Radhakrishnan and Narayan Lakshman, senior journalists both with the Hindu, are joining me from Chennai. T.M. Veera Raghav, who's tracked Tamil Nadu for years, joined me from Bangalore. Durgesh Haridos, Rajni Khan fan from Chennai. Suman Raman, political analyst, joining me also from Chennai. And I'm going to come to each of you to answer that big question that has been posed at the moment. First day, first show, is this a hit or not? Raj, you first. <laughs> Impressive debut. No doubt about it. 16% of the votes when his uh, compatriot in the previous polls, Vijay Khan, got only 10%. So I would give him full marks for that. Yet, uh, the potential is not fully. He hasn't really formed a party in that sense that the cadres are there. He, barring the fact that he's just announced, uh, uh, you know, that he's going to have spiritual politics. We're not very clear what his agenda is going to be. Tamil Nadu has got lots and lots of problems. Corruption is the number one issue that is there. Uh, agrarian distress. Will Rajni Khan be able to present himself as someone who could administer the state? That is to be seen, but a good beginning for him. Good beginning. Your first reaction, Shekhar Ayer. I think this uh, largely reflects the ground mood in Tamil Nadu. Uh, there is a lot of excitement after Rajni Khan announced his debut. But people are not clear about what he stands for, what is his organization like, what are, who are his political opponents, who are his political supporters. So that confusion largely reflects on the your overall picture of the opinion poll. Okay. Mr. Channa, when was the last time you did a poll which showed someone who just made his debut only two weeks ago, hasn't announced his party, hasn't announced his agenda, already is in double digits? We haven't seen something like this for a long, long time. And what this poll shows is uh, shows that Rajni Khan can be a game changer. Rajni Khan can be a game changer. Game -changer. The potential is there. Veera Raghav, joining me from Bangalore. Is he the game changer or is this poll still showing that Rajni Khan is work in progress? That we cannot at the moment say that he will create a super hit in politics like he did in film after film. 
In your cricketing terms, Rajdeep, I think your poll shows that it's a nice Rajni flick which hasn't reached the boundary as yet. He needs more power, he needs something plus that. And that is what he will, we will be looking at, uh, you know, I think Tamil Nadu will be looking at on what he have, offers as a Rajni plus. He needs much more power because the first week, as you're saying, is also the most popular week mm -hmm. for Rajni Kant. Uh, you yeah. know, it's a star entry, it stunned people. Uh, this is the time when his popularity is at its peak. Sumant Raman, your first reactions to our poll number showing Rajni Khan making a strong debut, but the DMK being in poll position. Narayan Lakshman, your first reactions to this. Narayan, your first reactions, and then Radha Krishnan. What does this show? Is Tamil Nadu ready for change, or is it continuity with change? Yes, we uh, many Tamilians are looking at Rajni Khan with excitement, but they are still sticking by the DMK. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rajdeep, I do think that, uh, you know, on the one hand, the fact that uh, Rajnikant got 17%, uh, it, it, it indicates Tamil Nadu's sort of uh, the vo electorate's open attitude towards allowing newcomers, even when they have this outsider tag, to enter and, you know, throw their hat in the ring and give it a try. At the same time, the rather startling, uh, you know, margin between him and MK Stalin really suggests that the people are sick and tired of. Uh, someone who is, or rather, multiple people who have been unable to govern. Governance is the big, is the G word in Tamil Nadu now, and people want someone. Uh, right. and, you know, M K Stalin fits that profile most closely. Someone who has, who is an insider, who has the street cred to actually govern and pull the state together f through all the multitude of problems that it's facing at this moment, which it has been facing for many months now. Let me turn to Radha Krishnan. Same question. Rajni Khan making an impressive debut, but the DMK, the party of preference, what does that show? Is Rajni Khan, like a good film, going to grow week after week? Do you see this only as the beginning? As both of you have uh, told us in the beginning of the show, the uh, poll was conducted just after a week after Rajni got into politics and concluded uh, two weeks after it was over. So it clearly shows that there is a huge space for opposition politics in Tamil Nadu. A lot of people do not like uh, the DMK and they were with the ADMK for long periods of time. Now some of them have drifted towards the uh, towards Rajni Khan or anybody they, they, that they think will be a viable alternative to the DMK and hence uh, the results and right. hence the, uh, this problem that we see. Okay, Elan Govan, you are the one who can have the smile before I go to TS. Before I come to you, sir, I want to go to TS Sudhir to get a final response from our independent analysts on this show. TS, your first reactions to what you're seeing? Do you believe this is only the start of Rajni Mania? Will he be like NTR in your home state at the moment of Andhra Pradesh, who created a storm in six months, won an election? Or will Rajni Khan require more time? Well, he definitely has the chance to become a game changer, Razib, for sure, Rajni Khan, given the fact that his first day, for sure, rather, it's something like a teaser to his new movie or his new political innings in that sense. And that has scored as, uh, to say, something like 16 million hits in the first day uh, itself. So in that sense, he has a scope to be a game changer, but more than a political vacuum that he's hoping to take advantage of, it's a personality vacuum. And Rajni Khan, given the kind of tall personality he is, he definitely has the chance to be a huge political political personality as well in Tamil Nadu. No, okay. The question Mr. Elangovan is that do you now see Rajni Kant as the big threat to your party given the fact that within two weeks of his entry he's already got 16% vote share while Stalin in this poll <coughs> is way ahead it seems that the threat increasingly could be posed by Rajni Kant's party not so much by the EPS OPS combine. See, this shows the failure of EPS and OPS. DMK is there even during the large polls. The difference between the ruling front and when Jayalalitha was alive and leading the party, the difference was a mere 1%. Now that it has increased because of the failure of the incumbent government, so people are ha not happy with the incumbent party, uh, so they want to sh shift their loyalty to Rajnikat. We are in the same position with a better uh, performance. The shift from ADMK, that is without Jailalitha, to Rajni Gandhi is a natural thing. Are you scared of Rajni Gandhi or not, Ilan Govan? Let's be honest. No, is he the, no, is, no. Does he frighten no. you? The popularity of Rajni no. somewhere is it frightening See, you or not? 
Uh, we have seen, see, we are the oldest regional party in the state, in the, I can say in South India. Since 1949, we have been seeing many political parties coming up. We have not been afraid of any political party. Mr. Elangovan, are you a Rajnikanth fan? Including, including... Is Stalin a Rajnikanth fan? a political party. Is Stalin a Rajnikanth fan? Yeah, I am also a Rajnikanth fan. That doesn't mean that I will shift my political loyalty to Rajnikanth. <laughs> no, but we saw what happened with NTR in Andhra Pradesh, where within a few yes. months of his party getting off the ground, he was able to build a huge amount of traction and arguably MGR, uh, arguably Rajnikanth today is a bigger star than MGR or Jailalita. They didn't have the kind of, they had a political backing which uh, Rajnikanth did, but in terms of star stature, in a state where most people in our poll say they want a film star in politics, they're not, uh, uh, they're not averse to that. Is that a big threat to your party going forward? No, see, MGR's politics, MGR split the DMK. Almost all MGR fans were in DMK. But Rajnikanth's fans were all, all in many political parties. That is the difference between MGR and Rajnikanth. Let all MGR fans were members of DMK. When M DM M DMK split, MGR took away half of our membership. Let Whereas Rajnikanth has to collect members from various political parties in the state. You know, that's a good, well, that's a good point you made. To good, good point. Durgesh Haridas, you are a Rajnikan fan. It's one thing to have fan clubs. To translate them to, into votes is proving a challenge. As our poll is showing, it is at the moment the DMK in poll position. Most of the votes that Rajnikan is taking is taking from the AI DMK, which at the moment is imploding. Why will fans necessarily vote for you? No, uh, as Mr. Elangovan pointed out that, you know, uh, there are, see, the, you, everyone knows that there are over 50,000 uh, fan clubs for Rajnikanth in, in uh, India alone, in Chennai and Tamil Nadu alone. So, and there are uh, members of, the, of those fan clubs are from various political parties. So, they will have, they will soon take a decision whether they have to change their political leaning but, uh, or will they follow their on-screen star into politics or will they remain with uh, the parties that they are, uh, you know, they've traditionally been with. So, uh, uh, it's advantage Rajnikanth in my opinion because he has a larger bag to choose from. I mean, he has, fa as Mr. Ilongovan said, there are fans who are from <coughs> various political parties unlike uh, just the ADMK and DMK which... Uh, uh, MGR had uh, back, you know, in history. Yeah, but, but what is very clear at the moment is the national parties in Tamil Nadu are just where they are. Whatever else has been churning in Tamil Nadu, the Congress and the BJP, Congress relying on being part of the DMK alliance, the, D, the BJP on the other hand, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Narayan uh, uh, Tirupati has a dilemma because for the BJP, do you tie up now with the Rajnikanth or do you go with the DMK? The DMK is looking at the winner in Tamil Nadu if elections are held today, but Rajnikanth is the rising star. Who do you want to go with? The rising star or the established actor? Or the uh, established party, of course, in see, this case. We have see in Tamil Nadu. In Tamil Nadu, we have been fighting both the DMK and the AADMK right from the day one, except for a few years. In 2001 to 2006, uh, even 2004, we aligned with uh, you know DMK and we had around five MLAs. That is the only stage or only uh, years we were with uh, these Dravidian parties. Otherwise, we are opposing them. There is a very big vacuum in Tamil Nadu now. That is why on immediate arrival, Rajnikanth, as per if it is right, uh, as per your uh, you know this uh, uh, survey, he has got 16 percent. I am very sure. That uh, Mr. Rajnikanth's policies and his you know way of uh, the the road which he is leading to is in our way and definitely without Rajnikanth joining uh, a, 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 a political infrastructure political influence it is very difficult for him to counter these both political parties whether DMK or AADMK because of their money power and muscle power. Definitely, Mr. Rajnikanth knows this, the entire Tamil Nadu knows this. So, definitely he has to go with some alliance and maybe, so who that is may that, with BJP. Who is I that ally is going BJP. to be? One minute, sir. Maybe. Who is, the, Mr. Narayan Tirupati, one minute. Who is that ally going to be is one of the fascinating questions. If Rajnikanth has to tie up, because it is clear on his own, he is making an impressive debut. But like in Tamil Nadu politics, you often need allies to really grow. 
Rahul, you have an interesting insight <laughs> as to a potential ally that Rajni Kant could have Definitely to make the great leap forward, and it's not the DMK. Okay, so now let's look at whether Rajni Khan's political innings can be a multi-star. Can he and Kamal Hassan come together? Do voters actually want that? So I take that question here. The first question I want to take is, can Kamal Hassan fill the political vacuum in Tamil Nadu? When this question was asked, 26% of the respondents said yes. That's one-fourth of the respondents. Remember, 53% had said yes in the case of Rajnikan, 26% in the case of Kamal Hassan say yes. 59% of the respondents say no, 15% are don't know, can't say. Let's now come to the next and very important question. Should Kamal Hassan tie up with Rajnikan? 29% of the respondents are saying yes, 31% of the respondents are saying no, 23% say they should fight each other, 17% are confused. But 29% of the respondents think the two of them should come together. T.S. Sudhir, one is seen as a very cerebral intellectual actor, the other is the hero of the masses. Can the twain meet? 29% of the people want to make it happen. Can it succeed if it does? Well, there are many of their fans, both Kamal as well as Rajni fans, who feel that it would be advantageous if the two actually fight uh, together instead of fighting against each other because they do see the two of them actually emerging as two political uh, uh, players in the 2018 or whenever the elections are held next in Tamil Nadu. So in that sense, there is a section of fans, both Rajni and Kamal fans, who feel that the two should fight together. But whether ideologically the two actually match is going to be the big question because as Rajni has been saying, his is more the spiritual kind of politics and Kamal has been wearing his atheism uh, and rationalism on his sleeve. So in that sense, ideologically poles apart and whether they can really work together is a big question. No, but Kamal when it comes to being poles apart ideologically, Rajdeep, does that really mean very much? You've got the PDP in bed with the BJP in Jammu and Kashmir for the sake of power. See, what is clear, Rahul, in our poll is people are looking at an alternative. People want an alternative, particularly to the AIDMK, which has always had a solid 30% plus vote. Now, if that vote were to go wholesale to some third party, rather than get splintered between various parties, it's advantage that third party. So, it is in Rajni's interest, perhaps, to actually see Kamal Hassan as a potential ally rather than someone with whom he wants to have a fight. Think about it. Just the impact of two stars saying, we are the outsiders. These were the two parties that have dominated. Give us a chance. You agree with that, Shekhar? It is to Kamal, uh, to Rajni Khan's advantage today. If he has to tie up, rather than a BJP or any national party, tie up with a Kamal Hassan. Broaden your base amidst those who believe it's time for an outsider. Well, uh, well theoretically, it looks... Uh Possible. Uh, that's possible. But I think practically Kamal Hassan has his own plans and he has his own ideas. And so Kamal are they Hassan, ideologically different? No, Is that ideo the yeah, ideologically also different because Kamal Hassan subscribes to the Periyar concept of rational approach, rationalism. And I don't think he subscribes to any of the Rajini Khan's uh, spiritual politics, quote unquote. So therefore, I don't see, but Kamal Hassan is on record to say that he supports the idea of Rajini Khan's entry into politics. And he has all his good wishes. Veera Raghav, Veera Raghav, any possibility you see of Kamal Hassan coming together with Rajni Khan or are we simply speculating at the prospect of a multi-star? I, 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 I think it's speculation. I think if Kamal Hassan goes in with Rajni Khan, there would, there would be a question raised on whether this is just a cinema political party, uh, whether it is actually a serious political party because Rajni has a very distinct identity and Kamal has a very distinct identity. Kamal has not been a mass uh, uh, you know, sort of a, a manipulator that Rajni Kant is. Having said that, Rajdeep, I think a lot depends on what Rajni Kant's political ideology is, how soon the elections are going to be, whether it's 2019 or 2021, uh, you know, and then what kind of candidates that he is going to represent. You see, he's got a platform to start with. He doesn't need Kamal Hassan to build that platform. He needs candidates. He needs politics to build that platform. And I think Tamil Nadu is wary of just actors coming into politics. Uh, Sivaji Ganeshan did not make it in politics in Tamil Nadu despite great popularity. MGR did because he had a political plank. You see, you cannot assume that an actor wins Tamil Nadu. You need to have a political platform, a political plank. Rajini's plank right now is the political void in Tamil Nadu, whether it's personality or ideological void. I don't think Stalin has the popularity that his father did. 
the results in the RK Nagar by-election where the DMK lost its deposit is an alarm bell for the DMK. They cannot take this granted as, a, as the only major political force in the state. And I think Rajni needs to prove himself as a politician. Everything will depend on that and not on Kamal Hassan. You know, the interesting thing is when you look at film stars in southern politics and, you know, sitting in Delhi, we sometimes are amazed by their impact. You've had various models. You have the MGR model and there was an interesting figure just mentioned by Veera Raghav, Sivaji Ganeshan. Great actor, but never succeeded in politics. But you get a sense that Rajni Khan perhaps has the kind of mass following that an NTR has. I come back to it. Can Rajni Khan do what an NTR did? NT there was no Telugu, there's some base. The party came in six months and stormed politics because people were disgusted with the other politics of, of Andhra Pradesh, particularly the Congress party and the humiliation of the Andhra leaders. Can Rajni Khan be an NTR or are we simply living in cuckoo land when we compare 2017 to the 1980s? Has the world changed? Well, you know, I did actually cover NTR when yes. it was there and the phenomenon that you saw was vastly different. There was Telugu pride being heard, which he hurt, which he exploited considerably. Secondly, there was no alternative. I mean, Congress was all in all in those days which dominated the political scene. Here you're seeing a difference. There is a political alternative in the DMK, and as the poll shows, they are still very strong. They performed fairly well last time, even when they, when they lost. They have an established leader, Mr. Stalin, mm -hmm. and so Rajni Kant is now having to contend with these two or three things. What he comes with is a certain freshness. I, I like Shaker's point about racialism, racialism because. Who takes the Dravida uh, vacuum that alien is... Uh, basically the uh, rationalism uh, point. That's, no, and he, he talked of the fact that what is Rajnikanth's uh, thing? He's also considered to be an outsider in some senses. Though many of Tamil Nadu politicians were outsiders before they converted into full-time, uh, you know, t uh, Tamilians. Uh, but you can see that there is a problem on that front. He has to, as I, I, uh, one of the panelists rightly pointed out, does his screen fans translate into political uh, votes or carders that would be there? I think... Uh, uh, in an earlier, uh, Rahul had very rightly pointed, he has about one crore or so uh, voters already available. Fans. With that uh, fan, sorry. Wh which you presume would vote for him if it was there. So he does have a certain political base. Does he have the kind of political acumen where he builds the candidates? But he could bring a freshness. That's the difference. Is the state tired of this Dravida politics that has become so corrupt and venal? Is there a rural urban divide though? Even in these state politics, is there a rural urban divide? Durgesh Haridas. Presumably, your fan club spread across the state. But as we've seen traditionally, DMK has generally done well in urban Tamil Nadu. AI DMK used to be stronger in the rural parts. Now, agrarian distress, water problems are hitting rural Tamil Nadu. Can Rajni Khan provide solutions to these problems? Does he believe that he can transfer his cinematic image and say that I'm the guy who's going to change Tamil Nadu overnight? MGR could. But MGR had a particular role to play even in cinema that Anna Durai gave him. M uh, Rajni Khan doesn't have that role. Can Rajni Khan fan clubs in rural Tamil Nadu also be able to galvanize themselves? See, uh, his fan clubs are slowly becoming people's forums. He's he's uh, getting more structure into his uh, uh, he's getting more structure into his uh, organization, and he's hearing out his fan clubs and members are hearing out the problems of people, and they are registering themselves, and everything is is being more stream made more streamlined now. It, it's very early to you know say that uh, does he have the solutions to all the problems? There there is still he still has time and. He, if he's taken so long to announce his political, uh, you know, entry, he would definitely have made all the groundwork, uh, you know, that is required to, you know, counter these or uh, at least find solutions to most of the problems that uh, the state or the uh, the state faces right now. Is Rajni Khan then ready? Is he ready to make that jump? Has he actually built an organization? And what is his spiritual politics about? Raul, you'll tell us some interesting numbers as to this whole notion of spiritual politics. And we'll also deal with the issue of what people think of the current government. Who is Jailalitha's true inheritor? Are people satisfied with the current government of OPS and EPS? Those questions and more. If elections are held, what would be the driving issue? And most importantly, what do people think of this whole issue of cash for votes? That and a lot more with Rajdeep and me when we come back on the other side of a very quick break. You're watching The India Today, Tamil Nadu opinion poll. And from what I can gather from social media, 
a lot of screenshots circulating all across Tamil Nadu about our opinion poll and interestingly, if it's the DMK, they're picking the bits that suit the DMK. If these are Rajni Khan fans, they're picking the bits that suit Rajni Khan. Well, that's just the way it is with all opinion polls. We'll have a lot more for you when we come back on the other side of a quick break. Stay with us. So what are the key issues for the voters of Tamil Nadu? When Karvi Insights asked respondents across the state of Tamil Nadu, what was the one issue that bothered them most? No surprises, corruption came in right at the top of the stack. At 24%, one-fourth of the respondents saying that corruption for them is the number one issue of the state. Price rise coming in at 19%, unemployment coming in at 15%, Failure of agriculture, and remember farmers have been protesting in Tamil Nadu and in Delhi, but that's only 6% of the respondents saying that that's their number one issue. Lack of governance is 6%. Corruption, far and away the top issue in Tamil Nadu. What do people think of the performance of the current Palani Sami government? When asked this question, take a look at the responses and this really should set off alarm bells in the AIA DMK. Only 1% think Palani Sami has been outstanding, 7% think the performance has been good, 25% think it's been average, 31% say poor, 33% say very poor, which means 64% of the respondents, that's almost 2 out of 3 respondents in our poll think that this government has either been poor or very poor. Rajdeep, that electorally is a red flag. Absolutely, and I, I, I think that's very clear that more than 13 months after Jailalita passed away, the AIDMK has imploded. There is no one who offers that kind of, either has the stature of Jailalita, uh, and importantly, all of them today are tarred either by the brush of corruption and non-governance. Jailalita faced the corruption charges, but she was seen in, as an effective government administrator. The new leadership is not seen as that. And that's where I believe, Sumant Raman, would it be right to say that Tamil Nadu today is facing a gaping political vacuum? And it's into that vacuum that the likes of Rajni Khan and to a lesser extent Kamal Asana are stepping in or that Stalin has suddenly become larger than life because the DMK has got oxygen with the failure of the AI DMK. <laughs> Look, uh, Rajdeep, I have consistently maintained that this political vacuum is the single biggest reason why Mr. Rajnikanth and even Mr. Kamal Hassan are actually even, uh, you know, contemplated this entry into politics. Having said that, I, uh, I saw some of the numbers which came earlier and if I were Mr. Rajnikanth watching this program, I would be very satisfied. Two weeks time, uh, you know, effectively since the man has entered politics, he does. He hasn't announced the name of the party. He hasn't announced his ideology. He hasn't announced his programs. And all he said is, we need to change the system. And he's getting 16 percent. Mind you, 16 percent is more than the vote share of the Congress, the BJP, the CPI, the CPM, the PMK, MDMK, and virtually every other party except the big two. And he's getting just 10 percent behind the ruling AI DMK, which I think is very satisfactory. The state. I believe that the next election is Mr. Rajnikanth's to lose. If he puts together a cogent policy, if he puts together a good team, this 16% can become 32% in no time at all. The reason why many people have he probably hesitated in voting for him or in this poll is because people are waiting to see what he is going to say. I mean, he said we need to change the system. He said we need clean politics. Very good. How are you going to give it to us? So that's what people are waiting for the answer and if he can actually present a good plan and a good team, right. it's in the bag. The point is whether he will do that, how soon will he be able to do that, that is the key to this whole, uh, how the story is going to unfold. You had about three ifs in that, you had about three ifs in that and I some N. Ram is also going to be joining us shortly uh, <laughs> from uh, the uh, former editor-in-chief of the Hindu. But I think in that what Sumant Raman said possibly holds 
the key to the future. Can Rajni Khan now build on the popularity by showing the people of Tamil Nadu, yes, I can administer, yes, I can build a team, or is that not even needed? Does a film star need to give more than just his film star charisma? What do you think, Shekhar? Does he need a bit more or not? Of course, he needs a lot more, lot more, because the first thing, even his fans association will have to be fully, you know, uh, empowered and given some oxygen. The fact that he announced he'll be visiting all the districts is a way of trying to create an organization, because these fan associations have... You, you don't think he can active. just, given the numbers that Rahul has put up, people are saying corruption is the major issue. He simply goes and says, look, I am going to provide clean eye spiritual politics. What he means by spiritual politics, we don't know. But if it is to mean clean politics, he can contrast himself with the existing politics and say, look, I will provide you decent governance. People will believe him. The people will believe him. But what, he, what will happen is more than the people, he will attract those disgruntled cadres of ADMK and AI DMK who are unhappy with the present state. What about the common man? N. Ram joining us now. N. Ram, do you believe as our poll and Sumant Raman suggests that this poll shows Rajni Khan has a real opportunity to break the duopoly of the AI DMK and DMK in, in Tamil Nadu politics. Do you believe that that could happen? That people are so disgusted with the existing politics that say, let's try Rajni Khan even though he's a novice. I don't think he can. I, I, Mr. Ram, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Rajdeep. Yes. My big question is, our poll seems to be suggesting a disgust with the existing politics of Tamil Nadu. Issues like corruption becoming the number one issue. Do you believe Rajni Khan can fill the vacuum as a result of this disgust with the duopoly of the DMK and the AIDMK? Particularly the AIDMK? Yeah, I think your poll shows uh, what we are expecting, that corruption is a huge issue. But, uh, and, and uh, I'm not, I, you know, I agree that it's the DMK that will gain the most, the alliance led by the DMK rather. And, but Rajnikant, uh, according to your poll, gets a significant share and that's not surprising. Whether it'll be 16% or slightly less or more, you don't know because it's still a, a lot of time to go. But uh, that makes sense. He will be able to cash in on... Uh, Mm -hmm. on the decline of the ruling party. The do you AIDMK. see the Rajnikan bandwagon gather momentum as the months roll on? Or do you think he will not be able to sustain himself as a politician and his charisma will fade away? I think much depends on whether he invests in an organization and that's going to be the challenge for Rajnikan. Because Tamil Nadu elections, as you know, are hugely expensive. Voters, you know, there's vote buying in many constituencies, if not in every one of them. And it's not clear who's going to finance Rajnikanth's uh, campaign. He's not even named his party. Uh, and uh, so I think he's got, to, of course, he's got his fan clubs uh, or fan units, uh, which, which which can be converted to a certain extent. And, uh, you know, this is about so which I can't. cash for votes. Can That's we take right. that question now? Yes. When we ask respondents, not just in Arkinagar, but across the state, do parties pay cash for votes? This is the very startling answer we found. It's been suggested that it happens, but 72% of the respondents said yes. In no other question was the response quite as overwhelming. And I'm saying this again, in no other question in our poll was the response as overwhelming as on the question of parties paying And you probably Rahul will not find this in any other state, where 72% will openly say yes, we take. Because when you pay, that means you're taking also. You're taking cash for votes. It was a simple yes and no question. Does and so happen? 72% if they are saying that means that money power will play an important role. You know, this is the T.S. Sudhir. Do you believe that this at the end of the day that Rajni Khan popularity one thing, but particularly in parts of Tamil Nadu, you also need big amounts of cash. And Rajni Khan will have to therefore get cash from somewhere to compete with the parties which have traditionally used these methods and TTV Dinakaran, someone whom we have spoken very little about. But as some people are saying, he could emerge as the leader of the AIDMK tomorrow and he has the cash reserves.
Absolutely. In fact, I find this very contradictory, Rajdeep, because you said more than 20% people said corruption is the big issue in Tamil Nadu. Yet 72% said that yes, they take cash and cash for yes. votes is a reality in Tamil Nadu. So the kind of socialist corruption that the political parties in Tamil Nadu have actually ushered in over the years actually does play a role in electoral politics. Uh, in fact, uh, the DMK, after they lost the RK Nagar election where they lost the deposit, they said that we, did, we lost because one of the reasons was because we did not give any money. Now, where will you find a political party actually saying that that was a not paying money to buy votes was a factor why they lost the elections and lost the elections so badly? So, in that sense, Tamil Nadu, I do believe that people do take votes uh, to take money for um, 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 uh, casting right. their vote, and where Rajni Khan will actually get the money to actually fund his elections and the uh, political party that he plans to launch is going to be a critical question. Will he actually say, "I am not going to pay any money for any vote"? Will people still come and vote for him? Okay, so let's go across now to VA Pugazendi, MLA of the AIA DMK. I want to understand because you can argue whether Rajni Khan's bandwagon will gather momentum or will he lose steam. But one thing seems very clear is that the EPS OPS government according to the people of the state of Tamil Nadu is a disaster. Two thirds of the respondents think the performance of your current AIA DMK government after Jayalalitha's demise has been poor. That's a very damning finding from the survey, sir. Uh, sir, good evening. Good evening, I'm sir. The, yeah, good evening. I am the uh, general secretary, our glory leader, Sasikala and the TTV Dinagaran faction. Then, uh, the totally the EPS, OPS have the all support the, uh, from the public. So, public totally upset, which way the government performance and everything. I am observing the debate. I am asking one question that the best opportunity is this RK Nagar uh, by election. I am asking the question why this superstar Rajinigan that Kamala Gasan not contested the election, you tell me. That always. No, no, but that's an immaterial the, question. That's because they didn't, they didn't want to pay cash like you did. The, the no. bottom line in RK Nagar, quite apart from anything else, is that you were paying a lot of cash. TTV Dinakaran has more money at the moment uh, than anyone else. That's the truth. The kind information, we have not paid any money or something, sir. This is the rumor going on. But No, no, our investigation the, found 6,000 rupees from the TTV faction, 2,000 rupees from the AIDMK faction, and you were paying three times more. No, no, this, this complaint is actually, some, somewhere after the election, some, some people that spreaded the rumor, 20 rupees not given, the half of the cut note then promised to give the money or something. Am I correct or not? That he already ruling party paid 6,000 rupees each water. That is the main complaint. I am not denying here, but 20 rupees all bullshitted. After the election, who will pay the money? No, no let's, get, let's get it clear. Veera Raghav, you are hearing from the TTV Dinakra and faction that we didn't pay money for RK Nagar. No one's going to believe that. But is money power going to be a factor? Rajni Khan, Charisma, Corruption being seen to be uh, endemic in Tamil Nadu. Do you see Rajni Kant also having to play the same kind of politics as the others? Can he really be that different? What is this spiritual politics he keeps talking about? You know, two things here. One, the reason why money power is powerful in Tamil Nadu is because of the ideological bankruptcy of both the parties. Uh, you have a disillusionment with the DMK, ADMK battle and money power changes it. DMK was the one which started it. I think people will laugh if, uh, uh, at Mr. Pugarindi if uh, he were to reiterate to them that they didn't pay money. Now the second thing, spiritual politics, he's not, he's talking about a clean politics. Now, I don't think he has really had a formation, a, a concrete idea that he's put in front of the people. If I can put it in film parlance, he's delivered his punch dialogue. But a lot of Rajnikanth films, and this is not 96 or the 90s where anything he puts out can become a hit. A lot of Rajnikanth films are also about who the good script writer is. Does he have a good political script writer? Certainly he needs a producer. He needs a producer, he needs a financier who is going to have to build that organization and that's right. going to be an uphill task. What okay. we're saying here is that there is a platform. Is no, he but able to build it? No, can he Rajdi, find the, the right one thing that could happen as a consequence of our poll is that the TTV Dinakaran faction can say OPS and EPS are simply not up to it. We're the ones who won in RK Nagar. Can TTV then try and 
mount a coup and push EPSOPS out? Before I come to you, Raj, just very quickly, Sumant Raman, on that very question. You know, there's a sense in this poll that the AIDMK now may want to come yeah. together. They yeah. are facing a huge challenge, a crisis of their identity, a crisis of existence. Do you see the AIDMK getting its act together or is that story over? No, I think, see, they have a potential opportunity in the uh, uh, merely because they are in power. I mean, they have the opportunity to make it count by delivering good governance. Now, unfortunately, why this has been restricted to just, you know, still uh, uh, doling out, uh, distributing largesse is something which is very, very uh, unfortunate. We haven't seen significant development programs. I'll give you a few simple examples. The, uh, the second, uh, the airport for the city of Chennai has been long delayed. The government has not even identified the land. All India Institute of Medical Sciences was supposed to be put up. I can give you a list of 20 other things which they should have done, which they have not done. But that is, there is clearly a kind of a paralysis of government. So that's going to be very difficult to salvage unless they get their act together. Having said that, two interesting findings, Rajdeep. The poll which said that, you know, corruption is the number one issue. I have followed such polls in Tamil Nadu for many years. Always it is price rise, unemployment which will occupy the first two slots. Corruption will be four or five. Considering that this is a society which, ha which by and large doesn't seem to have any qualms in taking cash and, and voting. So, corruption coming up there to me is a huge surprise. Again, the point is as far as Mr. Rajinikanth is concerned, the organization base that he needs to create the team again we go back to the same thing even more than money there is a huge set of youth those between 18 okay. and 30 who are desperate for a change right they right are that is we will come back well, to the dmk well, suman i'm going to hold you because we will come back to those questions is there a youth factor that rajni khan could attract but you wanted to make a quick last point uh, raj on this you know just uh, talking about the admk uh, one of the things that will hold it together in the coming uh, months or so is the need to stay in power. They know that if they squabble now, they're going to lose. So, I mean, it's, uh, they, they have to get their act together. The poll also gives them a huge warning. There is a lot of uh, despair that is there. It's a state of despair. They have to come together to sort of clear but up even everything. Even if they that come together, can, they cannot be Jailalita. Palani Sami, O Panir Selvam, or DTV Dhinakaran cannot occupy Jailalita's I, place. I, I'm just making another point on this. The fact that the, the state of affairs has got so bad, if you really look at it, it looks like Stalin has got a great boost in this poll. Yes. But he has really not been able to capitalize it uh, as much as he should. Because if you take away the Congress votes that is there, he is down to about 110 seats if you go by the percentages that we are calculating at. Which means that despite such a state of disrepair that uh, the ADMK is, Stalin is not coming, emerging as the clear winner. And Rajnikanth times his entry so well. Because if he allowed TTV as the post results of RK mm. Nagar happens, TTV emerges as the hero, TTV could have captured the ADMK because they now see him as the new messiah of whatever right. it is. Rajni Khan comes in and they've got a great political alternative. Okay, so what we'll do now is take a very quick break. We'll come back with the best snapshots from the India Today opinion poll for Tamil Nadu. This is the first time an opinion poll has come since the time superstar Rajni Khan announced his entry into politics. We'll bring you deep insights on this opinion poll when we come back on the other side of a quick break stay with us
Good evening, hello and welcome to the news today. You've been watching our continuous coverage of the big Tamil Nadu poll, the first of its kind and the first poll really since Rajni Khan decided it was time to step into the world of politics. A dramatic move that could have a tectonic impact on state and national politics. The big headlines from the India Today Carvi analysis poll on Tamil Nadu. The DMK-led front could sweep Tamil Nadu with 130 seats if elections are held in the state today. MK Stalin is the overwhelming favourite to be the Chief Minister. These are the first findings of the India Today Karvi opinion poll. Rajni Khan makes a strong debut if polls are held today. His party could win much of 16% of the votes. 53% of the people of Tamil Nadu say Rajni Khan will have a long and successful political career. The AIDMK is imploding. The ruling party's tally could drop to just 68 if polls are held today. The India Today Carvi opinion poll tells you that the inheritor of Jailalitha's legacy is being split wide open between Palani Sami, Panir Selvam and TTV Dinakran. That's right, this is the poll that in a sense captures the mood in the most turbulent and dramatic state of India today. A state that has gone through chief ministers exiting, leaders going to jail and now film stars entering politics. My colleague Rahul Kawal now brings you the big picture once again of the India Today Carvi poll. Rahul. This is the first opinion poll that's been done since the time Rajni Kant announced his entry into politics. What would happen if elections are held in Tamil Nadu just now? Let me take you through what the new assembly in Tamil Nadu could look like. Remember, there are 234 seats in the Tamil Nadu assembly. Karvi Insights projects for India today that the DMK Alliance will win 130 seats, that Stalin would be the next chief minister of Tamil Nadu and that the DMK would quite comfortably cross the finishing line. The AI DMK tally would crash to half their tally when Jailalitha led the party to power in the last assembly elections, coming down to 68 seats, losing 67 seats from the last time. Rajni Kant, the Tamil superstar who can do no wrong, making to my mind a strong entry. And I say strong because this poll was done when Rajni Kant had barely entered politics. It hadn't even been two months, two weeks. In those two weeks itself, Rajni Kant manages to pick up 33 seats for a party whose name hasn't been decided, whose program isn't known. Therefore, 33 isn't a bad start at all. So that's what the new assembly looks like. You've got Stalin's party, the DMK, at 130, comfortably, at least at this point, in place to form the next government in the state. The AIA DMK government in the doldrums. Very bad review for EPS. OPS as a functioning unit. They're not being able to hold on. This is what the vote share percentages look like. Let's start with the DMK Alliance. The DMK Alliance expected to back 34% of the votes. The AIA DMK Alliance expected to lose about half of its votes from the last election. 26%, that's 15% down from the previous assembly election. Rajni Khan's party, within two weeks of its announcement, coming in with 16% vote share. Most of these votes are being picked up from the AIA DMK. Uh, who is best suited to be the next Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu? When this question was asked, it became quite clear that people believe that Stalin is the true inheritor of Karuna Nidhi's legacy. He's established himself as first amongst the first, as the number one leader by far in the DMK. Across the state, he has a 50% popularity graph, which means half the respondents would like to see MK Stalin as their next chief minister. Coming in at number two is Rajni Kant. He's never number two. Here he is, but that's also because his party doesn't have a name yet. It doesn't have an identity. We don't know what his policies are. 17% within two weeks of getting started. That's a strong entry by Rajni Kant. There's a problem here. Pala Panali Sami actually has half the popularity of O Paneer Salvam. Paneer Salvam has 11% people rooting for him. Palani Sami, the current chief minister, has only 5% people rooting for him. Then, in the end, there's Kamal Hassan.
But remember, Kamal Hassan hasn't officially announced that he is joining politics. It's still a bit ambivalent. He's given some indications, but it isn't final. 4% of the respondents want to see Kamal Hassan as the next chief minister. In the end, there's TTV Dinakaran at 3%, not far away from current chief minister E. Palani Sami. So let me now go across to Rajdeep. It's very clear here, Rajdeep, that the DMK is in pole position, but the big threat to do the DMK is coming from Rajni Khan. How much can he rise? Will he be what in North Indian politics is called a vote cutter or vote katwa? Or can he cross the finishing line? That's the critical question our poll throws up. Rajdeep. That's right. And what it throws up possibly is that one of the more enduring phenomenon of Indian politics, the rise of the Dravida parties, is that now being threatened in Tamil Nadu by the rise of a cinema star? That's the question we want to explore. Are we going to see in Tamil Nadu a new kind of political phenomenon that is eating at the legacy of the Dravida parties, particularly in the post-Jailalita phase? Let's get reactions to what our poll is saying at the moment. T.S. Sudhir, you've looked at Tamil Nadu politics for a long time. Do you believe that Tamil Nadu finally is seeing the cracking up of the Dravida legacy? That what Rajni Khan has done is offered a challenge to the dominant two parties. Yes, our poll shows DMK ahead, but as time goes on, this Rajni phenomenon could catch on. Absolutely. He's new, the new kid on the political block as far as Tamil Nadu is concerned. Rajni Khan in 1996 was when he first gave a glimpse of a, some kind of a political interest. Tamil Nadu and the rest of the country has waited more than 20 years for him to actually formally enter politics. And he wouldn't have probably done that if Jalta uh, had not passed away uh, uh, in December 2016 and Karnanadi was indisposed. So in that sense, he is trying to take advantage of a personality vacuum and a political vacuum but who he actually ties up it's all well to actually lead the star cast but he needs a good script he needs a good director he needs a good producer and most importantly also needs a good supporting cast does Rajni can't have that in one of his films he had said in worry thani worry that is my way is my only way is that going to be his path is he not going to ally with anyone especially the bjp those are some of the important questions that will need to be answered right. before tamil nadu can actually Actually take the Rajni Khan very seriously. And the one question which Sumant Raman you raised is the youth factor. 18 to 23, the younger voters of Tamil Nadu who may be yearning for change, who may not have gone through the old legacy of the Dravida parties, do you see them being the most vulnerable to this Rajni Khan phenomenon? We are saying 16%. If 16% starts crossing 20, then Rajni Khan doesn't only become a spoiler he actually becomes a contender for power. Uh, Rajdeep, I want to point out one very interesting uh, uh, number that you put out. You put out a number of 34% for the DMK alliance. Mm -hmm. Now that, in the absence of Ms. Jailalita, is not a gain, though they are winning 130, I mean I won't, I won't go into the seat share, but uh, though they are the single largest formation, that is 5% lower than they got in 2016. So while the AIA DMK is losing 16% from 40.8% 40, 40 that they got in 2016, the DMK alliance, and that includes the Congress, is actually losing 5%. So effectively, if you look at it, the two Dravidian parties are losing close to 20% vote. And Mr. Rajnikant has just announced his entry a few weeks ago and he is picking up 16 out of that 20 percent if he can get his act together and make a coherent bid this 20 per this 16 percent can double very fast and where is that number going to uh, uh, where is it going to come from it's going to come from both the AI DMK and the DMK share so I think everybody and of course the smaller parties as well but the smaller parties have the risk of being completely uh, rendered being rendered irrelevant but mind you the DMK is getting 34%. They shouldn't be celebrating because it's 5% lower than what they got when Jayalalitha was around. We'll come to those smaller parties, the, the PMK, the MDMK, the parties which over time thought that they would op occupy the space as the Karnanidhi legacy declined, as the Jailal, as Jayalalitha was not on the scene. It's Rajni Khan emerging in that space. Manu Sundaram, this poll is a big warning for the DMK. Yes, you're still the number one party. 
but there is a point in what Sumant Raman is saying that this poll shows that both the Dravida parties today are facing a threat from a rising Rajni Khan. Two weeks into politics, I get 16% of the votes, means that there is a yearning for change. Well, uh, every poll uh, needs to be taken with a big pinch of salt and uh, I don't think uh, there any DMK member uh, will be out on the streets celebrating, whether be it uh, this poll or any other credible survey. Uh, but I do not think though that the Dravidian legacy, which uh, let me remind everyone here is a hundred years old. The first Dravidian party which captured power in the Madras Provincial Assembly was in 1919 under the, the first uh, uh, sort of party which was called the Justice Party and ever since we've had almost 70 years uh, and with a 30 year Congress intervening period. The Dravidian legacy also of the party is very uh, strongly and, and, and very comfortably with MK Stalin who is the next leader of the DMK and as you can and as your survey has pointed out he is I think commanding around 50 percent of popularity. Yes the the DMK and allies vote share has uh, reduced around 5 percent compared to uh, this time in 2016 when we actually had the election but surveys like these often only indicate the mood the trend you know which way it's going and uh, I, I just have one last point you know a lot of people here have spoken about this narrative of political vacuum. I do not think there is a vacuum because if there was then both the DMK and ADMK would have been washed away and you, ha you would have had a, a, a single party, a non Dravidian party coming up. So That's you are, you are virtually dismissing, who comes so you seem to be extremely dismissive of the Rajni Khan challenge. Veera Raghav, is, is the DMK justified there in being dismissive to... of the Rajni Khan challenge saying, look, we have a hundred year legacy, this is a state dominated by Dravida parties, this spiritual politics of Rajni Khan may, you know, seem attractive in television studios or to his fan club, but deep down inside these are loyalties that stretch down for years, particularly in rural Tamil Nadu, can a Rajni Khan make that kind of impact? Is the DMK justified in being so complacent? It would be foolish if they are complacent. Uh, they lost a deposit in a by-election which was a major jolt within the party. Obviously they can't accept that there is a political vacuum because MK Stalin wouldn't be very happy with that kind of an admission. But let's admit it, in Tamil Nadu at the moment this is not about rural, urban. These are not the, the, the factors that, that really count at the moment. You are talking of a situation in Tamil Nadu where you've had the DMK versus another party. As far as Dravidian legacy is concerned, I don't. I think you have to agree that that's something that's far too deep rooted to go away. The DMK is the original custodian of it and that party will at the moment there doesn't seem to be a threat for the DMK completely uh, demolishing itself but it faces a real and present danger. So far there, they did not have an opposition after Jayalalitha passed away. At the moment you have a credible face in the name of an opposition from Rajnikanth. Whether he can build from that base into a political party, into electoral votes depends on many factors from now to then. But the, nobody in Tamil Nadu can be complacent. The you know, Rajni the Khan would be eating that's into being both the DMK If Rajni Khan is picking up 16% of the vote share, where are these votes coming from? Is he pulling more votes away from AI DMK supporters or is he damaging the DMK? Let's put those numbers out for you. And what this suggests very clearly is that a majority of the Rajni Khan supporters currently are AI DMK loyalists who are fed up and frustrated with the way the party seems to be disintegrating after the demise of JJ Lalita. 66% of those who said they voted for AIDMK in the last election once again are prepared to vote for the AIDMK. 9% are shifting to the DMK. 20% say they will move to Rajni Khan. So 20% are moving to Rajni Khan. That means one in every five people who voted for the AIDMK in the last election this time want to vote for Rajni Khan. Um, Let's now come to the DMK and show you how the DMK vote uh, responds to Rajnikanth. Remember, the DMK, because it's in the opposition and is seen as a strong opposition, is retaining about 78% of its vote share from the last election. Out of the DMK supporters, 
5% want to go to AIA DMK and about 14% are joining Rajni Khan's party. What that means, Tikshit, is that AIA DMK is losing much more to Rajni Khan than the DMK is. Yeah, if you look at DMK has been able to retain its voter base. So out of 100 voters, they have been able to retain 78, while AIA DMK is losing 34. And out of that, 60% are actually, if you look at both from both the parties, those people who are who they are losing voters, 60% are going to Rajni Kant. The difference is DMK is able to retain, you know, you know, four which, out of five voters. Which means that there is strong anti-incumbency. Effectively, what it means, Shekhar, is people are saying we brought, we voted for Jailalita. We gave Jailalita five years in 2016. Okay. Jailalita is no longer there. We didn't vote for Palani Sami. We didn't vote for Paneer Selvam. We probably didn't vote for TTV Dinakran. We didn't vote for Shashi Kala. Mm -hmm. We voted for Jailalita. Now that she's not there, you, our vote for you is not guaranteed. We are looking at alternatives. Radni Khan is one of those alternatives. You get, you get that sense? Yeah, that I people, get... even loyalists of Jailalita, are now looking at life beyond Jailalita. No, it is the loyalists of Jailalita who are looking at Rajini Khan actually, because DMK will have its own committed cadres. Right. But it is the, the ADMK cadres who are actually completely disillusioned by what has happened in the last few months since Jailita's death. They are the ones who are looking for the new messiah. Is it the fence sitters who are looking for a messiah? No. Because in every election there are those who will vote one election for DMK and one for ADMK who actually make the difference as to who wins. Is that group also drifting you think towards Rajni Khan? Well, they, they could also be drifting because after Or they go to Stalin also as our poll is showing. And, and Rajdeep, there is one point about Tamil Nadu politics today. It is extremely caste division which is guiding. And so, what, so how is the caste? Is it the Thevar? Yeah, you have the Thevars versus counters. You have the Dalits versus Vaniyars. Dalit, for instance, in southern Tamil Nadu, it is Dalit versus Thevars. In the north, it is Vaniyars versus Dalit. So all these caste divisions... Could, could merge if Rajini Khan emerges as a kind so of a does that factor. mean the end of parties like the PMK? Does that mean that the parties which try to build on precisely the caste division that you are talking on in Tamil Nadu, what happens to them? Will Rajni Khan break the caste divisions? Can Rajni Khan actually put Dalits and Thevars on the same side? Can he get the Gounders on his side? He is not a Tamilian. Can a non-Tamilian actually bring these parties together? Well, th that that is what his persona should be aiming at because that is the only way he can get them. That is how MGR did it. Because MGR, being an outsider, used this film persona, persona to get all these casts un under him. But Rahul, you have interesting figures as to the fact, when, when we ask the question, whether the fact that Rajni Kant is not a Tamilian, would that make an impact on the elections? I think we need to look at that again. Okay. Because that, to my mind, is a very important question. The fact that he doesn't belong to Tamil Nadu, does that make him more appealing across castes? Or does that limit his, uh, his ability to cash in on some sense of Tamil pride? So when respondents were asked this question, will Rajni Khan's roots as an outsider work against him? He was born in Bengaluru, but his roots are traced back to Maharashtra. 63% said yes. 29% said no. Remember, both MGR and JJ Lalita were not really from Tamil Nadu. They came from the outside, but they conquered hearts and minds in the state. But in this case, 63% of the respondents say Rajni Khan being an outsider will work against him. But Rajdeep also remember that 53% say he will be successful. We've got JVL Narsima Rao joining yes. us from the BJP. He's a cephologist. This poll doesn't have good news for the BJP because the BJP's own vote share in Tamil Nadu continues to remain negligible. You were hoping that Rajni Khan would somehow tie up with you overtly or covertly. But this poll has 80% of the people telling him don't tie up with the BJP. Only one in five Rajni Khan supporters is willing to consider a BJP Rajni Khan tie up. So you have no good news for yourself or through the one person you were quoting so hard. <coughs> Rahul, let me uh, 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 put on uh, my pollster hat for a uh, half a minute to analyze the, your poll. I think uh, Tamil Nadu is a very fragmented polity. I think no party, no single party has been winning a majority for several decades. It has been a coalition state. Your poll shows that this has pushed Tamil Nadu further into a coalition era because the dominant party, DMK, could have actually gained some vote from uh, uh, the ADMK or from the rest of the co coalition at a time people you say are not happy with governance 
the dominant party ought to have pulled more votes. But that has not happened. While your poll shows Stalin is acceptable to half of the population, he is simply not able to deliver votes to his party. So it is a fragmented party, only a, gov uh, uh, only a governance agenda, a pro-people, pro-poor agenda could have actually united caste, united voters and delivered a single party majority for Tamil Nadu. But this poll clearly shows Tamil Nadu is push, is, has been pushed more towards uh, even bigger coalitions than what it has seen in the past. In such a scenario, yes. where Lok Sabha elections are scheduled a year from now, there is no possibility of a state election happening. With BJP being the single national uh, poll today in national politics, so certainly BJP will have a big role to play. A BJP-led coalition, even though BJP may be a smaller engine in that force, that will have greater traction. No, so, so you are so you are open. Uh, are so you I'm saying you are open? Speculating on which party we want to go along with. So you are keeping your options open for you now. Yeah, Tamil Nadu go is ahead. going with whichever party. It could be the DMK. It could be Rajni Kant. It could possibly <clears> be AI DMK. Are you saying all options open for you? Is that what you are saying? No, but I uh, no. The only no, no. What I am saying is, yes. Whichever without a national party as a part of a coalition in a Lok Sabha poll, it is difficult, if not impossible, for any combination to really yeah, deliver. Yeah, but the Congress, result. Congress so has a larger BJP vote. The Congress a has a larger figure. vote than you. Also, this is one of the few may not states. Be the dominant. This is one of the few states where the Congress still has a larger vote than the BJP. Sumant Raman, you wanted to get into but, it as you were listening to GVL Narsimha Rao. Your quick point. But, but Congress is no longer a national party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, there are, there are two points. One, one point, one, no, one minute. One Congress point that GVL made, power. which I want so, to agree with, is this key issue where Mr. One, one minute, sir, one minute where Mr. Stalin is actually far more popular than his party. I've been saying this for a couple of years and time after time it's been proven that while people are quite willing to vote for Mr. Stalin, they are not so happy in translating the same votes for his party. Why is that you think, so that's Suman why you get this dichotomy where 50% of people want to see him as the chief minister, whereas only 34% want the entire DMK alliance. As for alliances, Mr. Rao is right. I think it's going to be very important. The DMK has always, for the last three decades, it has depended on alliances because the Jailal, under Jailalita, the AIA DMK became the larger party. Yes. They generally had an 8 to 10 percent additional vote share vis-a-vis -vis the DMK over a period of time. That is why they have more to lose now, which is why you're seeing more votes going away from the AIA DMK to Mr. Rajnikan than Can from I? the DMK. So can I come back to that? What can I come back to that question, though, that I raised? I, I, is, honestly, anything goes. Can I come back to the question, though, is Rajni Khan an outsider? As we yeah. showed, 63% felt that because he is not a Tamilian, that could have an impact. I want to ask that Rajni Khan fan clubs. Do you all believe Durgesh Haridas? That I, I that think is that an question impact. was possibly you know, he's not a, murdered, right, Rajdeep? The question. The question should have been, yes. would that influence your decision to vote for Rajinikant or not? But that is exactly it. I think that, it. that, I think that was a better answer. That was because the question. Did, think he will be successful. Was, does the, his roots work yes. against him? Do, 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 the question was, do Rajinikant's roots work against him? 63% said yes, they do. 29% said no. So among floating voters, possibly this could be an issue if there was tomorrow a Tamil Nadu versus Karnataka Kaveri dispute. Where would Rajni Khan stand? These would be co potential questions that could be asked. The opposition could make advantage of it, uh, uh, of that. Durgesh Haridas, is that a question or do you believe Rajni Khan is above this divide? That he is, a, a, just like MGR was, no, no. he is above all these divides, no. whether it's caste, whether it's linguistic. If, see, uh, uh, a large portion of uh, Rajnikanth fans are from various parts of uh, 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 India. Even even in Tamil Nadu, Rajnikanth fans are not only Tamilians or only people who you know watch uh, only only Tamilians. I would I would mm -hmm. like to say, and he is someone who wants to break the caste barrier. And he uh, his spiritual politics doesn't speak of just religion. It's about righteous politics, which and he's mentioned that it will be secular. I don't think. 
people are fans of his despite uh, knowing that he's from uh, he's not from Tamil Nadu so uh, personally i feel it will not work against him because for so many years we've been his fans and so many years we follow him his ideology and uh, uh, we've been fans of him despite we we all know that no, but uh, there's he's a difference in between Nadu, a fan and being him. a voter how many of those fans will become voters that's the question for rajni khan can he create the party structure can he organize the funds can he create a vision which could lead the way for him becoming a serious contender for power in tamil nadu we'll ask these questions and when we come back on the other side of a quick break we look just, at that just as a quick aside the fact that a marathi is speaking i mean his original language become the chief minister of tamil nadu i'd be pretty happy about it but that's <laughs> another story for another day okay so we'll slip into a break and when we come back the possibility of kamal hasan and rajni kant coming together it would be a political blockbuster it would be the most exciting most tracked election but what do voters in tamil nadu think do they want rajnikanth and kamal hasan to come together is it at all possible for them to come together given their difficult different political orientations we we'll look at that when we come back on the other side of a very quick break you're watching the india today karvi tamil nadu opinion poll stay with us One question that's been asked often is can Rajnikanth and Kamal Hasan come together they've delivered many a hit on the cinematic box office can they deliver a super hit on the political box office as well let's take you through the sets of questions which give us some indications on what's in the mind of the voters of Tamil Nadu question number 1 can rajnikanth fill the political vacuum of tamil nadu 40% of our respondents say yes a larger number 53% of the respondents say no uh rajnikanth cannot fill the political vacuum 51% of the respondents saying no rajnikanth cannot fill the political vacuum can't say is 9% the next question that we asked was about kamal hasan and whether people felt that kamal hasan could fill the political vacuum in tamil nadu here kamal hasan has a lot of eyes lots of people saying yes but not as much as rajnikanth on the question of whether rajnikanth and kamal hasan should come together 29% of the respondents say yes kamal hasan and rajnikanth should come together that's a big number but remember you've got about 31% of the respondents saying no kamal hasan and rajnikanth should not come together uh, 23% of the respondents say they should fight against one another should not ally at all 17% is i don't know and can't say so rajdeep it's very clear that people in tamil nadu are divided on the issue of whether rajnikanth and kamal hasan should come together should they fight one another or should they fight separately no clarity because of how fluid the situation is at this time on this critical question frankly rajdeep there is no clarity and that's what i want to look at because one of the fascinating things is that while this poll is showing rajnikanth on the rise kamal hasan who hasn't formally announced he's entering politics hasn't made that kind of impact ps yes, sudhir explain that to our viewers there'll be viewers today will be asking look rajni is making these strides where is kamal hasan because kamal hasan in a sense has given enough indications that he too wants to enter electoral politics is he a non starter well kamal hasan has been dismissed by his critics as more of a twitter warrior and he has been making his position pretty clear on the microblogging site than actually coming out in fact day after tomorrow is when he will actually announce his program to start touring the state from the 26th of january so we may have a much more clear idea about <coughs> kamal hasan's political plans unfolding from republic day but having said that i think kamal hasan is also pretty aware of the fact that he is not seen as a mass hero 
oblique mass leader like Rajnikanth would. He's seen more as a class center whose appeal is perhaps more restricted, more to the urban centers than to rural <coughs> Tamil Nadu. So in that sense, his appeal and reach may not be to the extent that Rajnikanth would be. Would the two of them actually make a good combination? Yes, on paper, it would seem that the two of them, if they come, indeed come together, can be a potent force which can actually take on even the DMK. Uh, but whether that will really work is a question given the fact that their opinions seem to be rather different on various issues and they may not really be able to gel together. In fact, many years back in the early 80s, Kamal Hassan was the one who had suggested to Rajnikanth that they should not act together because Rajnikanth was always getting typecast as the villain in Kamal Hassan, where Kamal Hassan was the hero. Now, ironically, it is Rajnikanth who is seen as the mass hero and Kamal Hassan is, would almost be forced to play the supporting role in case they, if they indeed come together. You know, uh, this phenomenon, Shekhar, or both of them, the root, you know, while we look at Kamal Hassan and we look at Rajnikan, are they both essentially urban phenomenon? Yes, Tamil Nadu is increasingly urbanizing. Will they be able to make a dent in rural Tamil Nadu? Agrarian distress, water issues, Kaveri is a major issue. If Rajnikan goes into the Kaveri Delta, can he make the kind of impact that perhaps he could make in a Chennai? Are these both essentially at one level? Is there a class factor? Is there a rural urban divide which will restrict them, limit them, particularly when they are facing these parties with decades long legacies? Well, there, there are a number of landmines. There are a number of landmines like Kaveri issue for Rajini Khan. Yes. Now, as for uh, Kamlasan and Rajini Khan, probably could I just agree on one point putting an end to this cash for vote. And uh, I thought I should bring this point in 1996, yes. when the first time Rajini Khan made a political statement was his appeal to for the DMK Tamil Manila Congress Alliance when he said take the money that Jayalta gives but vote for DMK TMC. I think that was one big statement. Similarly today before Rajini Khan made his debut we had Kamal Asan speaking the very same language you know appealing for people of Tamil Nadu to wake up from this slumber of this corruption which is going on. So I can see a, a a, a, a common approach as to fighting corruption. No, but that's yes. only on one issue. The one fact issue, is but that Kamal Hassan has a very left liberal kind of orientation. Rajni Kant has a very spiritual, keeps visiting uh, various temples in the Himalayas, has a close link with the RSS, with Guru Murthy, likes to meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi, has been in touch with Amit Shah as well. Can the two come together ideologically? No, idea, and apart from ideology, they don't have some great chemistry either. Even when they were in... Uh, uh, Collywood, they had problems. That's why, you know, after a few uh, uh, numbers they did together, uh, then both parted ways because they were too strong a personality by themselves. You know, but, but the question is whether in, in Tamil Nadu's politics, let's be honest, while we can be critical of Tamil Nadu for cash for votes, the fact is there are other positives of Tamil Nadu. This is on most social and economic indications, Sumant Raman, a state on the rise. I mean, Manu Sundaram, you know, will probably turn around and I'll get him on this also. But I want to ask you, therefore, you know, it's not as if Rajni Khan can overnight come and tell people of Tamil Nadu everything is wrong in your state. There is also a lot of positive impact that the Dravida legacy has had on Tamil Nadu. Is it simply a question of leadership now or is it also ideology? No, I think there are two uh, basic aspects to this, Rajdeep. First of all, I think that uh, I agree entirely. We've done very well on socio-economic indicators. The um, social welfare model that has followed has led to inclusive growth compared to a lot of other states. So I think that we have to give the two big Dravidian parties the credit for that. Whatever else might have been the corruption that uh, they, they may have indulged in, at least on social indicators, Tamil Nadu did well and is consistently doing well. Until a few years ago, industrially also the state was doing very well. So compared to a lot of other states in the country, Tamil Nadu has plenty to be uh, happy about. The reason now is that A, there is a leadership crisis and second, the level of corruption that is that people are seeing in day to day life and hearing about in the media has possibly reached a stage where people are saying enough is enough. Yes, right. these parties may have done good. They may have uh, d delivered on welfare schemes. Manu Sundaram, respond to that. Let's get both the politicians, the, Manu Sundaram the, and the we put a get him. Respond to that. that. People that are saying, sorry Suman, just to interrupt you. People are saying enough is enough, Manu Sundaram. People are saying we've yeah. done with this yeah. AI, DMK, DMK, duopoly. Both of you in some level have benefited Tamil Nadu, yes, with welfare schemes. But there is also the stench of corruption. 
Every deal involves money being paid. Well, the people. Well, the people certainly don't seem to be saying that in your survey. They are. They were. Uh, Twenty. The, the highest. DMK the highest percentage ADMK was one, corruption is the number one issue. Certainly, and and that's I think uh, you know that's something that perhaps uh, uh, you haven't covered so far because if you see even in Jayalalitha, I mean the whole narrative that 2016 was a vote for Jayalalitha, then equally in 2017 February when the Supreme Court upheld her conviction, I think people may have definitely decided to uh, make a turn against the ADMK. Then see the problem with the. Uh, with, with Rajnikanth and Kamal Hassan also is that we are all sitting here at 10.30 p.m. on a very good uh, uh, news channel and trying to decipher what two 60-something year olds political philosophies are. I mean, by now they should have actually put out a big policy. I mean, they have about 25-30 years of public service and still we do not know what they stand for. And the other issue is that, you know, every time the BJP wants to come out on a big show like this, they, they really are quite aggressive. But they, when they come to th a Tamil Nadu related show, they suddenly become a cephologist. So th I think that's a that's an interesting takeaway for me. How GBL respond, that's a straight dig at you. As they come into Tamil Nadu. GBL respond to that. They say that you're, 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 <laughs> when it comes to Tamil Nadu, it's all about your cephology. It's not actually, you no, got less you votes in RK Nagar than no Nota. Nota got more votes than BJP. Modi magic doesn't work in Tamil Nadu. But, but the so-called party that the party that you were expecting to be a winner lost its deposit in the same constituency. So I think one has to bear that in mind. I think uh, the BJP, as, as I told you, as a party, we are certainly trying to grow. But we are still not, a, we have not emerged as a major player. But we will certainly be, a, 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 we will be a major pull force uh, in the alliance that we are going to be a part of. So NDA will certainly do, we are the main challenge, principal challenge to the opposition in Tamil Nadu. And I can see the DMK getting really worried about its inability to really pull a votes in a, in a scenario where there has been a vacuum. I think it would have really looked nice if you had done a poll even before Rajni Khan's entry because DMK is unable to really appeal to the people. The tag of corruption I think has stuck to the DMK no matter they may have got a, a favorable court verdict but the public perception the DMK is, is is certainly the corrupt party. I am. I am. I am. I am recording what you just said. I am recording what you just said. In is case not one year from any, now you tie up with DMK. GBL Narsimha Rao, I have asked my producer to record what you just said. <laughs> in case one year from now you tie up with the BR DMK, I am keeping it in our archives. Please do it. I I say it on all. No, in public. Yes, in public Hello. perception. The 2G is, the, is a textbook case of corruption. I think this cannot, 2G is the most blatant form of corruption. Okay. They may have okay. got a reprieve in a court, you know, but the certainly one question I think there is no, it does can not be nobody's case, yeah, there has been just no corruption. Minute, but you have enough indications of what may happen just on the basis of the data before us. If Rajnikanth and Kamal Hassan were to come together, would 2 and 2 equal 5? Or do you think it would only go to 3? <coughs> Yeah, my take on this would be th three, not five. Why? Because first of all, the, both are not clear on their po political narrative, which they are going to come out with. Secondly, as uh, panelists said, that you know both are both never go together, even in the Hollywood days. So if in, so, how are they going to manage their own issue, own ego issues, issues which are going to be big as well once if they come together? And more than that, more than that, Rahul, I think is the question: Can they be 24 by 7 politicians? Politics at the end of the day today is 24 by 7. You know, T. S. Sudhir, Veera Raghav, do you believe that Kamal Hassan and Rajni Khan, with all you know, Kamal Hassan does big boss but also wants to be in politics. Radni Khan says, I will contest an election, the next Tamil Nadu election. So he's also looking at 2021. Does he have the stamina? He's not getting younger. His health has not been great. This is not an MGR who was in his early, what, 40s, 50s, when he entered politics, was ready for it's, the, it's, you know, to go. Do you believe, Sudhir, it, that Radni Khan has the appetite to do 24 by 7 politics or the health to do 24 by 7 politics? In fact, uh, 
Kamal Hassan was always tweeting very aggressively, but in the entire month of December, he did not tweet because he was in the US finishing the post production of Vishwarupam 2. <laughs> and that kind of led to uh, people commenting about whether he is trying to do some kind of a Rahul Gandhi completely going absent. So that led to a lot of memes being circulated in Chennai. So in that sense, people, as you said, expect a 24 by 7 politician, not someone who is there and just takes a one month off and not is not there at all uh, commenting on public issues. Similarly, after the launch of the party on the 31st of the December and a couple of days later when he put out the website name, even Rajdi Khan really hasn't really been seen commenting on public issues. Now, whether this is the kind of politics that the two actors are planning to practice, well, that will leave a lot to be decided and people will ask questions because the MGR, NTR era was very different. Today, in the age of social media, hard questions will be asked, people will be held accountable as to what they stand on each and every issue is. Do Rajni Kant and Kamal Hassan have the stamina and also the bandwidth to be able to devote X amount of time to uh, politics. Remember, right. Kamal Hassan is planning to release two films. He's also planning to launch Indian 2 in 2018. Where will he have the time for politics? Rajni Kant has two films lined up which will release in 2018. No, so, so it's so anyone's far, guess as to whether Raj Rajni politics Kant will be by for them. has always been been on a pedestal in Tamil Nadu and I asked one person who just met Rajnikanth and spoken to him about his political ambitions. He said that one of the fears that Rajnikanth has is that the halo that surrounds him might go if he's not able to succeed as a politician. But then it was literally now or never once Jailalita passed away and therefore he's taken the plunge. Given the fact that he's at a pedestal, suddenly you enter politics and people who've been your fans so far suddenly start asking tough questions. Can Rajni Kant and Kamal Hassan take on those questions? Can they be 24-7 relentless politicians? I, 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 th I think it's going to be, it, it's going to take a metamorphosis for Rajni Kant. He's a spiritualist suddenly and then he's, he's, he's a politician suddenly. He sort of picks and chooses uh, the life that he has and, and even as a film star he's gone into long periods of silence. Uh, so with Kamal Hassan, they have, they, they're, they're, they're stars uh, and they need to show a metamorphosis. Rajni uh, has, has greater appeal but I think that's a, that's a very valid point. Uh, it's about their ideology, their personality, whether they're really committed into politics. Remember MGR fought a by-election. It was the AIDMK won in a by-election and, and and you know came out of politics mgr was uh, was with the dmk much before and jailalita the AI dmk so there is a there's a huge difference here when it comes down to that you know jailalita was propaganda secretary she was rajya sabha mp that these are politicians jailalita mgr they went through the grind mgr was yeah, trained in a yeah. way by anna durai so there was a sense sumant raman before i right. come to you i want to get durge saruda does a, is Rajni yeah. Khan ready to do the hard miles. It's one thing to have hit after hit in cinema, but politics you can lose elections. Is he ready to lose and then win? Or does he simply want to come into politics when everything is laid out for him? He has to be 100% certain only then he wants to be in politics. What is this waiting till 2022? That's a, or 2021. What no. will he do in the next couple of years? I, does he want, if there's a <coughs> film shooting, will he continue with the film shooting or will he go and address a rally? No, see, MGR I, I, no, gave I up cinema. Rajni would, Rajni, I don't think Rajni sir would have taken a decision to enter politics if he, he would have, he knows that all these questions, these hard questions will be asked of him. And unless he was 100% committed to serving the people of Tamil Nadu, he would have never made a statement that he's going to enter politics. So I think we will see 100% commitment from him when time comes. No, but the fact is he took many years of agonizing over this question before actually deciding politics. And one person he spoke to, he said, if I had to do this, I should have just done it in the mid 90s when I was at my peak. So, given and uh, given how long he's he taking said, he said to take that decision, he he given how ambiguous he's been, he says spiritual politics, spiritual politics. Most of the respondents we speak to in our poll don't fully understand what spiritual <laughs> politics means. He, apart from corruption and honesty, he hasn't defined what spiritual politics is. Let, let Sumant Raman define no. spiritual politics. You know, the question that Rahul is asking will now be relevant because now yeah. people will start asking Rajni Khan questions. At some stage, he will have to answer those questions. Do you have the capacity, the health, the commitment to remain in politics? And that is where perhaps our poll is showing that Dravida parties are still a little bit more trusted, particularly the DMK. People are not sure of Rajni Khan. Yes, he has made a strong debut, but to sustain it, he will have to show a little bit more than just film star value.
And one more point, uh, Rajiv. Yes. How will he implement the this spiritual politics? So Absolutely. And, 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 and how that is where it implemented. It yes. would, would it be Suman yeah. Raman. Yeah. Yeah. One second. Yeah, no, no, my, my, my point is very clear. He needs to show that he will last the course. That is the first thing that he needs to show. Second, he needs to show a commitment to being uh, in politics full time. He needs to take the hard questions. You know, he, he does tend to be res reticent when he's facing the media. You know, sp speaks a few, uh, you know, lines and then he doesn't take too many hard questions. So those kind of things, obviously, we're going to be uh, waiting over the next few weeks uh, to find out how he's going to adapt to the new uh, avatar that he's uh, decided to take. But uh, having said that, he has taken 21 years to make up his mind. So I think that he would have thought through the issues uh, before uh, taking the plunge. The other issue of Kamal Hassan and Rajnika. Look, Mr. Kamal Hassan going on his own. I don't think uh, that the future is uh, is that rosy, especially if he just goes on his own. So there is. I already know that there are a few well-meaning individuals who are trying to get Mr. Kamal Hassan to sort of sign up uh, on the Rajnikanth bandwagon in some form or the other <laughs> or the coming together as it were. Whether it will work, we don't know. So I that's, think that's because two major issues. One is the ideology part. But right. both but both of them said they want to change the system. Both of them have taken an anti-corruption plan. So there's plenty to unite that's the also about how much anger there is. The I think that's the point. I think I think that's absolutely the point, Rahul. Is there the do they have the hunger and the will? You know, it's one thing to take up protests on Jalikatta. It's one thing to take up, you know, pro but it's the other to actually fight elections, build a war chest, you know, create the kind of political machine that you need to win an election in a state like Tamil Nadu with two established parties confronting you. So I think while our poll has given a teaser as to what lies ahead, I'm not sure, Rahul, that we can say at the moment that Rajni Khan is a super hit. First day, first show, strong showing. But you can't say that this is a golden jubilee just but yet. But Rajdeep, first day, first show, strong showing for a movie which doesn't have a name. The movie doesn't have a name. The movie doesn't actually at the moment even have a script. Correct. And we certainly don't know what the ending is. Yeah. It has a hero. So you it has a, a hero. It has, has a superhero. Yeah, yeah. But there's no cast, there's no crew, there's no program, there's no script, there's no promotion plan. It's still got 16% of the vote share, 33%, 33 seats. That's Rajni Kant for you. But clearly getting a selfie clicked and translating promise into reality are two different things. Uh, our phones have been buzzing, social media talking a lot about this opinion poll. It's given something, Rajdeep, for everyone to think about. That's right, because I think the phenomenon, and I think we should end there, is that since NTR really broke into politics in the 1980s with that remarkable victory, we haven't seen a film star politician emerge in southern India with this kind of impact. So clearly Rajni Khan has given a talking point like no other since the last 30-35 years of a star making it so big in politics. Can he actually make that big breakthrough? We still don't know. I think we should, we should say the jury is still out. I think the jury is still out. Even this poll seems to suggest the jury is still out. Can that 16% become 20% plus? Till then, advantage DMK and Stalin. I'm keeping that bite of of GVL Narsimha Rao, where he says the DMK is a party tainted by corruption. I'm going to keep that GVL because in case you tie up with the DMK, I'll remind you of it a year I from now. Want, I Thank just want to add that okay. point on the, Mr. Rajdev, Mr. Rao. Uh, yeah, yeah, 53% keep, keep people bite. said that DMK was framed in Just one line, Rajdev. G. Yes. 53% say that DMK was framed in 2G. 53% said DMK was framed in 2G. GVL. They are not guilty. They are, they are, not guilty. They are out of time. Quickly, please. 10 seconds. You are one line. No, you see, no, no, I think Rajdeep, there, yes. there, is, a, uh, there is a Chiranjeevi in between. I think you did not mention that. Chiranjeevi is showing in actual polls was something similar to what you have predicted for, yes, good for point. Rajni Khan today. So good. Chiranjeevi could only go so far and not no further. That's what I'm no saying. Further. I'm saying that so NPR Rajni was the last actually, phenomenon. I'm sure Rajni Khan had uh, kept track of Chiranjeevi. That's right, but NTR, but yes, Are I really wish we have put an election on his kept own. You waiting NTR there. was a phenomenon. Mr. Puragani, what do you want to say? We have 10 seconds left. What do you want to say? Yes, sir. You have been waiting. There is a, MG, MG, Mr. MGR has defeated Karunanidhi continuously 11 years. Yes. So, Amma finally brought 37 MPs. See, this is all history of Dravidian leaders' history. Here, the age of 68, what he is going to do? Rajini Ganji, you tell me, sir, he cannot do anything because age factor. 
You okay, okay. 68 is too late. So, okay. Kamal Agas and Rajinikanth both together. This Thursday and Friday, Rajdeep and I and the, the entire Sima India Today Martin team will be in Thank Hyderabad you, as we bring you the India Today South Conclave. This opinion poll is the precursor to our big South focus. We'll have top chief ministers from the southern states joining us, an eclectic mix of musicians, dancers, theatre personalities, film stars. So do tune into India Today all through this week in our big South Focus with the South Conclave. We're slipping into a break. Four hours of very exciting uh, coverage. Thanks so much, Karvi and Dikshit, for doing this at such short notice for us. That's the way the news cycle works. I don't think there's ever been a national channel that has covered the South for four hours on a political poll like this. So in a sense, new ground has been broken. But that's the impact of the Rajni factor and the legacy of Jailalita, which still is waiting for an heir. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.